Thank you for welcoming me into your life. I'm a grandparent, and I have noticed that I've been talking to my grandkids online, and I've had some amazing experiences, and I want to share them with you because as a grandparent during the age of coronavirus, you can be especially helpful. I mean, you're always helpful. Grandparents are always helpful, but you can be especially helpful now because you can give your own kids a break. You can entertain your grandchild, but also it's an opportunity for you to take a deeper dive and actually enhance your grandchild's development. So I'm going to be focusing today on three to five year olds, and that's because they can engage in pretend play. So that's what we're going to be talking about, how you as a grandparent, by engaging in pretend play with your grandchild online, no less, can provide them with an opportunity to strengthen their, their development. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about the average thing we all like to do with our grandkids, right? We play with them, we read books to them, but doing it online can present extra difficulties. I have some kids, grandkids who live far away, so I often engage with them online, but I even have to engage online with grandchildren who live right here in Los Angeles. And one of the things I've been doing is reading books to them. And what I've discovered is that they love it. And, but for a three to five year old, they show me what's on their mind through what books they want me to read to them. And it's often books that um, have something to do with some kind of threat or danger. That's because three-year-olds are dealing with their fears and anxieties. They're filled with fears and anxieties under normal circumstances. But here we are in the age of corona where the fears and anxieties are extra. Not only maybe they listen to the news, but even if they don't really know that much directly about what's going on around them, they're picking up on the fears that their parents have. They know something's going on, right? So what do ch young children do? They like to read books and engage in pretend play that have to do with the dangers that they're worried about. But they do it in a pretend make-believe way. So they want to read about trolls and monsters and scary goblins and witches. And the heroes in the book often then overcome the witches and goblins. And that's how children engage in ways to master their fears. That's the whole point. Children want to hear and see scary things for the purpose of mastering them. And this is where you come in. Children also of this age specifically like to engage in pretend play. Well, reading, well, that's pretty clear. You don't have to come up with anything on your own. But pretend play can be an even richer way of doing it because the child is really involved. What I have discovered is that what's super important about pretend play is that children want to come up with it themselves. So let me talk to you a little bit how to engage your child in pretend play online. They're not in the room with you, but you can play with them just as you would if you were in person. It just takes a little extra um, creativity, let's say. Now, not all young children are used to doing pretend play online with their grandparent. So you might have to offer it. And you know what's so wonderful about kids is they're so open. Pretend play is their, is their natural way of, of operating in the world. So you don't have to teach them how to do it. They already know. All you have to do is invite them in. And something as simple as saying, like, something like, would you like to do some pretend play? Well, the average three to five year old will say, yeah, because that's what they like doing. That's what they do on their own. They're doing pretend play. And then you might say, well, what do you want to pretend play about? What should we do? Well, frankly, many kids will say, well, let me cook you a meal or they'll come up with an idea. But if they don't, that's okay. 
you can still engage them by your open-ended invitations. Like I might say, um, well, if you don't know what to do, um, you want me to come up with an idea or could I give you some choices? Because that's a way of still keeping them engaged where you're following their lead. You're not directing it. That's the whole point of pretend play. You're not supposed to direct it. They are the director. <laughs> in fact, if anything, you're one of the actors in their pretend play. The point of pretend play is that it's open-ended. And things happen, and then you engage the child about, well, what do you think's gonna happen next? Or what do you want to have happen next? Now, following their lead, I really am trying to emphasize this because actually even in your everyday experiences with your grandchildren, if, even if it's not during the age of Corona and if, even if it's not when they have all these extra anxieties, following your lead offers many benefits to your grandchild. Developmental benefits, not just fun benefits, but developmental benefits. One thing it gives them is an opportunity to come up with lots of solutions as, as to how to overcome the threat or danger or solve the problems that they're facing. The ability to learn how to problem solve, the ability to learn how to innovate, this is what we know actually in the long run of life, not just leads to healthy development, but it actually leads to greater achievement and success. So getting your grandchild started really early with innovating and problem solving is a great thing to give them. Now, of course, the solutions they're gonna come up with are gonna be make-believe, right? Well, turns out, even make-believe, pretend, completely unrealistic solutions work, they do the job. They actually effectively reduce the child's stress, fear, and anxiety. And we know, you know, as adults, we're all doing mindfulness meditation and trying to calm ourselves down. And children need that too. Children need to have their fears calmed. And why do they have to have their fears calmed? Well, first of all, too much stress response is not good for their biology, for the body. But it also interferes with development because then they can't be open to learning and engaging with the world. So anything you can do to reduce their stress. And so even a make-believe solution to reduce their stress works. The other benefit of it is that if they're engaging in pretend play, we know that children, children express what's on their mind through pretend play. That's how you know. It's like a little x-ray machine into their mind. What's going on with my grandchild? Well, let's see what they're playing. And in pretend play, they express their fears. So they're expressing their fears and anxieties, and you are right there with them. You're engaged with them. And the message you're giving them is that What's on your mind matters. What you're feeling matters. I can understand it, I can make sense, and I take it seriously. And those messages actually enhance your child's emotional and social development. Social emotional learning we know is so important these days, and this will enhance social emotional development, which we also know makes children more capable of self-regulation, regulating their impulses, regulating their negative emotions, and being, enabling them to be more cooperative. Another thing that having you right there, working with them on their fears, is it just makes them feel safer. And as I said before, anything that makes them feel safer reduces their stress level of their biology and opens them up to being able to learn and engage with the world. Now, listen, I'm a, I really am a three-year-old still myself, so I find it really easy to engage in pretend play, make-believe. Not everybody does. I'm also, listen, I'm a psychiatrist and I've learned about these things, so I understand that following a child's lead is really important. But many people actually feel a little reluctant to follow a child's lead. So let's talk about what's the reluctance? And maybe I can help you feel a little less reluctant, a little more comfortable with it. Now, one reason people 
uh, adults often uh, are reluctant to engage in um, following a child's lead is the adult sometimes feels I have to be the teacher. I have to teach a child the right way to think, the right thing to do. My, my engagement with them must be meaningful and productive. <sighs> well, let them do that in school. <laughs> There's a lot of learning that can take place. But what I'm trying to get parent, grandparents in particular to understand is that the whole purpose of this engagement with your child online, especially during the coronavirus, the whole purpose is just to have a connection and an interaction. It, this may sound like a silly analogy, but I think about going out for coffee with a friend and you're just chit-chatting. You're not having meaningful conversation a lot of the times. So you're just connecting. A lot of times we just want to connect. We just want to interact with others. Isn't that what we want to do right now? Get out of our house and interact with some people? Well, that's what your grandchild needs. And that's the whole purpose of it. It doesn't have to be deep and meaningful. It will be because they're going to be expressing meaningful things. But that's not the point of it. So you don't have to worry about being a teacher and, and, and making them uh, be correct about what they're thinking. So let go of that. Many grandparents feel inhibited, inhibited about creative play. They say, I'm not that creative. Well, the good news is you don't have to be. You're fortunate because you're dealing with a three-year-old or a four-year-old, and they are creative enough for both of you, especially if you're following their lead. When you start the story of the pretend play and ask them, so who's going to be the characters in our pretend play? Or where are we? Or what are we going to do? Or what objects should we use? They will come up with their own ideas. And again, you don't have to be that clever about it. I mean, you know, I've used fruit sitting around the house. I had a whole bunch of leftover corks I had been collecting. I could just write a little face on them and they turned into people. It's really um, utensils, eating utensils. Oh, and that's another thing that, you know, uh, grandparents who are reluctant to do creative play worry about. I don't have the right objects. You know, I don't have like dolls and stuff that I can use. Um, it doesn't matter. A three or to five year old child can imbue anything with a mind, a personhood, and a story. Doesn't matter. Uh, frankly, if you have tissues around, you know, use a tissue as a ghost. Doesn't matter. Okay. Now, listen, we're human. You're human. And all humans worry about being judged by others. I know it sounds a little silly, but grandparents, even parents, sometimes worry their child is judging them. Their young child is judging them. Well, I can reassure you that is not on their mind at all. They are just focused on whatever they're interested in. They love you hook, line, and sinker, accept you hook, line, and sinker, and you can't do much to change that. That's just how children relate to the loved ones around them. So the last person in the world who's going to be judging you is your young grandchild. In fact, you can mess up. They don't care. As a matter of fact, sometimes they laugh at it. Oh, Grandma, you did something so silly. And then the two of you can take the opportunity to laugh together. Just don't take it personally. They don't mean it that way. They're enjoying it as a together experience. So let me tell you an example of some pretend play that I did with my very own granddaughter. Sometimes uh, my granddaughter likes to have me be on FaceTime and I walk around the house just showing her, you know, she's been to my house and she likes to sometimes see it. So I was walking into one of the rooms and in that room there's a coin jar I keep on the dresser. Old collection of coins that I've had for a long time. And, and I said to her, would you like to play with the coins? Because we've often played with those coins before. She says, yes, Grandma, spill out all the coins, spill out all the coins. So I took the coin jar, it was a little heavy, and I 
you know, took it off the, the counter and I put it on the floor and I said, okay, you really want me to spill everything out? Yes. So I spilled it all out, you know, forgetting about the mess, of course, for the time being. And then she said, show me the shiny coins. So we did that for a little bit and I would pick out one of the coins and some of the, the pennies were really shiny. And so she'd get to say, nah, that's not shiny. And I put it down and I'd give her and show her another one. No, that's not shiny. You know, and then, then I would show her another one. Oh yes, that's shiny. So we made a little pile of shiny. Then she said, make a man, make a man who is going to rescue someone. I said, oh, because that's what we've been reading about heroes who had been rescuing people from fire breathing dragons so i said okay but then again i had to move the coins it wasn't her but how to engage her so i would say things like hmm should i give him a big head or a small head and then i would try to follow it um should i give him eyes yes yes two eyes you know and so we engaged like that and I said well what kind of hair and she said crazy hair she said spill some coins on him so I spilled some coins on his head and made him crazy hair and then you know we made him legs and feet and all that and she says now he has to have a sword because he has to be able to protect people from the scary monsters I said okay so I made him a little sword out of coins remember you don't have to be an artist two eyes two dots and one dot is enough to make a face <laughs> a circle is enough to make a head stick figures is really what we're talking about so she i said so what's what's the man's name and so she came up with a name and one of her fam favorite names these days is Sammy, for some reason, I don't know why, but Sammy, his name is Sammy. Okay, so what's he gonna do? He's gonna save the girl from the fire-breathing dragon. And so, I'm, you know, we, we did that, and I said, what does a fire-breathing dragon sound like? Anyhow, then we moved on, and she says, now, Make the girl. So then I made the figure of the girl. Um, so the man saves the girl, but then she turns it around and she says, now the girl is going to save the man. And so then I had to make the, a little um, sword for the girl so she could save the man. But the whole thing was interactive, getting her to make the choices, so to speak. And eventually later on, they... <laughs> she wanted me to make grandma and then the man and the girl saved grandma and you know we just kept going until she was ready to stop now I can get down on the floor you know I'm old but I can still get down on the floor many of you may not be able to or you might have arthritis in your hands and you can't manipulate things as well so I actually got a um a stand here I can show it to you a stand for my um, cell phone, so I could put my cell phone on the stand and I don't even have to hold anything. Um, I don't even have to hold books because I found a way to um, get some online books that I could actually read to her. But you can sit wherever you're comfortable. The whole point is your grandchild accepts you. And so if you say, I can't get down on the floor, if she wants you to get down on the floor, you say, well, you know, Grandma, she can't get down on the floor anymore. And they go, okay. And, you know, and then you, I say, well, should I sit in my chair or should I sit at the table? You can give them choices and they can still interact. What I really want to reassure you is that your grandchild, what they want and what they need is you, who you really are. Because at this age, they are learning about how social relationships go. Actually, this is one of the tasks of, three, of being a three-year-old, that how relationships go is, is one of the most important features of our development because we are social creatures. Look, we're being so deprived during the age of corona for our social connections, and it's so hard for us. Yes, losing money is terrible. I mean, I don't want to... I don't want to minimize that. People getting sick is terrible. 
really one of the major stresses is lack of social engagement because it's so important to us. And this is one of the things young children are learning. How do I engage? How do I interact? Does what I say matter to other people? How do they react to it? Do they respond to me? Can I have an impact on other people? Do other people enjoy me being with me? These are important lessons. And by engaging with your child during this time, you are helping them learn that very important lesson. But in order to teach a child about social relationships, you have to be yourself. They want to engage with a real person, not a fake person. So don't try to be who you think you're supposed to be as grandma. Be grandma. And remember, with pretend play, you are giving your grandchild an opportunity to work on their fears, to master their fears. Mastery of fears is a lifelong experience that we have to sometimes keep learning again and again. But when children start to learn it early, they're better at it later on. And mastering fears means being exposed to dangerous things in a pretend way, because it's safe, and then finding solutions for overcoming, finding coping mechanisms, finding your inner strength, really, ultimately, that you can cope. And that's what one of the things of giving your grandchild the opportunity to do if you engage with them in pretend play online. Thank you. I hope to get another chance to talk to you on another occasion about another topic about grandparenting.